You know, whether you're a filmmaker or an actor looking to create stunning reels, understanding the color page in DaVinci Resolve is absolutely crucial. And today, we're going to break down each tool and show you how it can help you enhance your footage. Let's dive in. Our first thing here is our gallery. This is where you can create still, stills like this. And this is actually a very useful feature because let's say you have a lot of clips on the timeline. You could actually come in here and apply the grade right off of here. You can also create this. If we put this right here, this is your sidebar. You're going to notice stills and power grades. The difference between stills and power grades is the power grade works on a whole new level. So everything within this database right here, if you come into your homepage and you have a lot of like different timelines on there, everything in this power grade window will allow you to copy those grades over from one timeline to the next. Your stills page here is only for this particular project, okay? Stills for this project, power grade for the database. And how you do this, you just right click again on the power grades and you can grab still. Over on this tab here, this is your LUT page and DaVinci Resolve includes the fill LUTs. Now this is what's really cool about the free version. These LUTs are included on the free edition of DaVinci Resolve. We're gonna go in here, I'm gonna show you guys just what I mean. So here is your film looks right here. And this is very, very powerful lots. Okay, so we got our Fuji and then we have our Kodak. How this works, you'll see D55, D60, and D65. D55 is your warm, is your warmest one, okay? And your D65 is your coolest one. So we got our warm, our somewhat cool, and our coolest. I primarily like working with the D60 and we can actually apply that by double clicking on it and it'll apply it straight to our first node here. We're gonna go ahead and right click and reset. Right here is your media pool. In your media pool, you're gonna see all the clips like what we see in our edit page. And you can take them and you can drag them onto your timeline, right? Well, you're gonna see that here on our color page. So everything is just moved from one page to another page. This here is our clips. If you toggle this on and off, it will bring up our timeline preview uh, on the bottom. The more space you have to work with, the better. It's the way I always like to do it. But you can toggle this on and you can see what's actually on your timeline, right? So if you come here into your edit page, you're gonna see exactly this on our timeline window right here. And this right here is our preview window. And over here is our reference windows. And what that means is like, let's say we have both clips selected. You, if you're on a Mac, you can press command and you can click on a second clip. Now, why is it not playing? Well, because you have a drop down menu here and you can click on this and say, uh, selected clips. Now look what's happening. Okay. So now I'm seeing both clips side by side. Why is this good? It will get it to where your exposure and your color match. The other cool thing is, is in the gallery, you can bring in stills. You can import different stills by clicking on, right clicking and clicking import. And you can find it where you download the stills. Now, if you guys use Shot Deck, you're going to need to go into Photoshop and you're going to click File Export and you're going to export that clip uh, at the highest JPEG it offers, okay, right at 100 and export it. And then you could bring it into this. And the reason why I'm saying this is because if you don't do it, it will shift the colors on that image and you're not going to get good accurate color reading from the still that you're importing. And there's different reference windows you can use. Um, you can do the wipe, so you can actually see what each clip is doing. You can do this, a side-by-side -side comparison. Uh, and you can also do an A and B. This here is a really handy tool to have. 
you can click on the down arrow and you can click on prefer camera originals because a lot of times when you're editing, you're going to be working in proxies. So you can say prefer camera originals or you can click on disable all proxies. Over on the right hand side, we got our node tree. And I want you guys to envision this node tree like an appliance. This right here is your beginning. And I want you guys to think of this node here like it's the outlet, the socket. Okay, and you're, you're getting ready to plug it in. So you're plugging in the footage, your data, into the computer, and it's starting to get ready to read. But it has nothing to reference, right? So let's just create another node by pressing Option S if you're on the Mac. Now this right here is going to be like the on and off button. This is the final node of the grade right here. So whatever is happening is going to be pushed out and it's going to be seen from this image. And then everything in the middle right here is basically the guts, the guts of the appliance. So, you know, you got your chips, you got your processors, everything like that. This is what's going to make everything work right. So we got our, our outlet, our on and off button, in the guts down here we have our primary window tab and these primaries here are the most essential and most vital thing to learn in davinci resolve why because you can literally do everything you need just using these primary wheels and i want to show you guys why these are very vital to learn on here you've got three different versions here right you've got your primary color wheels you got your color bars and you got your log wheels. So what's the difference between these three? Well, these two, there's not much difference. The only difference that you're gonna see is that you're dealing on a red, green, blue bar basis. So you can get more precise control over individual colors. What we are looking at here is just like what I was looking at here, but this time I want you guys to think of a stereo system, okay? On the stereo system, you have what? Your bass, your mid, and you have your treble. That's the same exact concept that we're running into on these primaries. So your lift is like your bass. It's your lower end of the image, your blacks. So when I bring it down, look what it's doing. It's affecting only the blacks, right? The gamma is your mids. It's affecting only the middle part of the EQ or footage itself. And then your gain. Your gain affects the, the brightest areas of the image. Now, the offset, I want you guys to imagine it being the master volume of the image. So the master volume, it controls everything on here, okay? On the log wheels, the log wheels are basically like the backbone of your image itself. So we got our shadows, our midtones, and the highlights. And this is just to get you more precise on your color correction. So your shadows is affecting only the shadowing part of the image, like this part right here. And then our mids, mids right here, our midtones are affecting essentially like skin tone of the image. And then our highlights, where it's affecting only the highlights of the image, okay? And then obviously we still have the offset where it's the master volume. Over here is our custom curves. If you guys are a photographer, you probably have seen this before. The cool thing about these curves is that if you click on this three dot arrow right here, it's gonna bring up these little sliders and it will help you create a very smooth S-curve in your image. And you can adjust this. Let's say that we turn the edible splines off. Over here, you have individual controls between everything, okay? So we unlink this. This is your wide channel. This is just gonna affect your Luma. This is your red greens and blues. Now you could bring each one individually down or up and you can create something stylized just using the curves, okay? 
For instance, we're just going to bring down the reds a little. I'm going to create just some minor greens. Okay, good. Over here is your hue versus hue. And let's just say we want to adjust this color alone. So we're going to click on him and look what it does. It, now, whatever I do is affecting just his skin tone. I'm going to bring in some contrast into this. So that way you guys can really see what's going on. So look at this. If I move it up, see what it's doing? So down is green, it's making a skin green. Up is turning it more on the magenta and then going into blue, blue, blue. Okay, that's your hue versus hue. Hue versus saturation. Let's do a little bit. Let's change the, the truck color here. So we click on this. Let me click on the truck color and the hue versus hue. Now you can actually see what's going on, right? So let's say we don't want it that heavy. We go into hue versus saturation. We'll click on the dots and you could bring down that saturation level. All right, hue versus luminous. Now with the hue versus luminance, you can select where you're wanting it and bring down the luminance value of the saturation in the image. See what it's doing? Look at the skin tones. Look right here. Look what is happening. Okay. You can even get more precise by clicking on this and bringing it in. See what it's doing? So let's take a look at these scopes for a second. On these scopes here, you're going to see, uh, just like on the stereo system, but the stereo system is left to right, right? This read from top to bottom or bottom to top. So the zero is your clean blacks, 1023 is your pure brights, and anything past this bar is what it's saying. Anything past this bar is clipping. So if I brought this all the way up, look what's happening. Nothing's happening because it's clipped. And obviously you're pure white. Now, if I bring it all the way down, now it's saying that, yeah, we're underexposed and we're clipping. And then each one has an individual level. So you could see where everything's at. To set up your scopes, I want to show you guys this little trick, okay? So when you bring up your, your scopes and you click on this and you say display qualifier focus on here, it's going to show you exactly where your skin tones are lying. Okay. And the key thing is, is trying to get the skin tones to line up as closely as possible to the skin tone indicator line. Okay. That's what the skin tone indicator line is scientifically showing you that hey, this is what looks the best for skin tone, okay? And it's just a fine line between the red and the yellow mixed. I love the waveform and the parade scope and the vector scope when I grade. The waveform is great to tell me where my blacks are sitting. So if I go my shadows, and you're going to see right here that it's definitely not pure black, that I'm running more into the teal line for our shadow line but what happens if i balance it you see what's happening you're getting into the pure white right here okay look up right here so on the pure white that's telling you yes you are as close to black as true black as possible and it's the same thing that goes for the highlights if we go into our highlights see what's happening up there Right here, pay attention to this. See what's happening? So I could bring it in and dial it in precisely to get very clean highlights if that's the look that I am going for. All right? So last thing I want to show you is, and if you guys have not checked out our hour-long DaVinci Resolve tutorial, be sure to check it out right here at this link. It will walk you guys through in more depth on a lot of stuff. All right, so the last thing I want to show you guys is uh, our project settings. So that way you guys can get this set up according to what you guys are needing. Um, I primarily work on a timeline color space of DaVinci Wide Gamut DaVinci Intermediate. So you can come in here, click on this, and in your output color space, I set it to Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4.
The last thing here is the 3D lookup table. If you're using LUTs, click on tetrahedral. And I always click on the make broadcast safe just because it, uh, it assists you in keeping your image clean, if that makes sense. Your timeline color space, if you guys have not checked out our hour-long tutorial, uh, there's the link right there. Uh, that will give you more in-depth on why I choose the color spaces that I do. Because your output color space is essentially what your monitor is reading. And your timeline color space is what your camera is reading, okay? Or the computer is reading. So we're going to save that. I'm going to, the last thing I want to see on our DaVinci Resolve Free Edition is if any of these effects actually work. And no, it doesn't. So your film look creator does not work on the free edition. And this is what it's going to happen when you put something on. It says you have reached a limitation with DaVinci Resolve. And no, not yet. With that being said, guys, we did get a winner for our DaVinci Resolve studio and chris huge shout out to you congratulations for winning the davinci resolve studio and speed editor if you enjoyed this video make sure to like subscribe and hit that notification bell for more filmmaking tips and tricks practice and create and i'll see you guys in the next video